Ooh, look at us. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the host, but you are hosting Made in Greenwich at the moment, aren't you? Yes, yes, uh, with the exhibition. Yes, your exhibition is in Made in Greenwich on Creek Road, and you've been there for the last two weeks. Absolutely, um, it's been wonderful because um, all the residency has been a lot longer than that, but I really wanted to space out my time so that it's part of the October month of Black History as well. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, you are bang smack in Black History Month, aren't you? This project's been running 365 throughout the whole year. You've been doing loads of events across the whole of Greenwich, from Woolwich Common to Kidbrook Community Centre and Correct. Woolwich Front Room as well. That's right. Uh, now so, I'm Lady Greenwich, my hometown. <laughs> hey, you're just around the corner. Fabulous. So, <clears throat> Victoria, I think, would you like to introduce yourself firstly? Yes. Um, hello, everyone. <laughs> Wherever and whenever you watch this, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here today. I'm Victoria Ajoku. I am a fan enthusiast. <laughs> and the proud founder of a small business called Fan the Glory with Tori, with the slogan, together, we yeah, are indeed wonderful. fanning the way to freedom. So I'm a fan maker, in another words. <laughs> Is it, that, that's the whole point of this uh, progress, program that you're doing, this journey that you're making. So fan making is a dying art is that correct unfortunately yes in the uk um there are so many reasons behind why it's endangered but what i'm focusing on is reviving its concept um there's less than a handful left of fan makers with the skill um, and also the passion to teach the craft um and so fortunately some people have passed on yeah. with the skill so they weren't able to hand the, you know the skills down teach it over mm -hmm. um other people have the skills but they live abroad and so it's very hard to get in contact with them um and so i think what i'm doing is something that i just haven't seen done before and that is to make sure that fan making classes are touring. I'm basically, I'm a touring fan maker. <laughs> and it's a class tour across the UK. So I'm mobile. Oh, nice. And uh, the classes are always tailored, always themed. Lovely. So no class is ever really the same. And it's really for people of all ages, abilities, walks of life and backgrounds. So I'm special passionate that the craft reaches, I guess, Gary, a broader spectrum of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love the fact that you have used the word passion, I think, three times so far. And one of the most beautiful things always when I meet you, Victoria, whether you're teaching, whether you're selling, whether you are just enthusiastic, Enthusiasm? I can't think of the word. Um, <clears throat> about fans and the history and the dance and the mythology, you could say, with the fans. You have that deep passion of what you're doing. And I knew, actually, I, I didn't need to worry about today because <laughs> you are amazing on television. Now, television, that's an interesting one. I hear your, your new best friend is Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> Uh, I just can't, I still can't believe the whole thing happened. Literally, I got an email um, a few months ago saying we would love to have you on um, ITV's Love Your Weekend with Alan Titchmarsh. And I looked at the email and I just thought, you know when you get the notification of the email first before you really read it? I thought... Yeah. Spam. What? Yeah. What? What is going on? How did they hear about me? So many things going through my head, so excited. Uh, I was just like, absolutely, 100%, I'm there, yes. So they were just really keen about showcasing artisans who are doing something positive and consistent 
in helping an endangered craft. An honour to be there. Um, such a great team, so friendly. Alan is so approachable, so kind. Mm. The nation's uncle. <laughs> such a beautiful set as well. I mean, I love parks and farms, and it was just oh, a real therapeutic getaway. And I think for me, I was just honoured to be recognised yeah. and to not only teach and demonstrate the craft, but to mm. be asked key questions to mm. such a such a popular platform as itv really? is that prime, channel. Yeah. prime time absolutely you they found you you said yes and i know that you will continue given the opportunity to share your passion you will travel the length and breadth of 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 britain i, I <clears throat> i've i've known you now I, when when did you first join gcda when did you first meet? I think I joined in 2021, so two years now. Two, only two years? Oh my gosh. And then <clears throat> I rock up to a camping festival called Folk by the Oak and you were there. Yes. Demonstrating, yes. training, um, it's ideal opportunity to bring back that, the, the heritage of craft. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, so let's see uh it's been a massive year for you i think too big in fact <laughs> <laughs> never i would say absolutely never ever for you yeah so you've been on television you've been showcasing your work um with gcda across greenwich for the black history month 365 funded by the royal borough greenwich how has that experience been do you know what? It's just been the icing, one of the icing on my cake for 2023. I think for me, I applied for it in 2022. And then when I got the email that I was successful, I thought, Victoria, this is such a wonderful, unique opportunity to um, really show the public how much you know, how much skills you have, mm. and to really feed it back, you know, into the public really, um, mm. just to show them how much passion and um, knowledge that I, I have. Because certain people, you know, have heard of me locally, but they I don't think they realised until they did some of my workshops through the 365, just how much there is you need to learn about fan making. Yeah. Um, so for me, I was just like, you know, I have to get involved, really immerse myself, stretch myself as an artist. Um, so I could have chosen anything with fans, but I deliberately chose um, paper marbling. I know. Marbling. So beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, turned out to be quite hard work because that's I'm another. Actually, yeah, I'm live in the Made in Greenwich shop, and the you? exhibition is all around me. Of the um, marbling. Yeah. So I think. In in a moment, what we might get you to do, and I'm going to surprise you with this, and it's not something that we spoke about before, but maybe actually show your artwork in, in Made in Greenwich to take a sweeping view of your craft. But I just want to point out that marbling is also another endangered craft. Yeah. I love marbled paper. And there's something about it that's just so, I want to say mystical. But I just think it's so beautiful and it used to be churned out, I would say, in places like Venice and, you know, it was for exquisite books and it was a refinery. I don't, not only, not only did you take home the dying craft of fan making, you then also added in marbling with lots of different styles. Tell us about all the different, different there was, I think, three different ways you were doing it. Is that right? I'm not too sure. Yes. So, rightly said, um, paper marbling is an endangered craft. Fan making is critically endangered. Um, so I thought this would be a great chance to marry the two themes together in an exhibition. Just to point out, that's never been done before in the world. I've researched an exhibition by a fan maker tackling um you know covering fans yeah. and paper marbling for public display 
So thank you, GCDA. Thank you, Royal Royal Village. <laughs> we have done something so innovative and groundbreaking. Do you mean? Oh, incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so and exquisite. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the methods, as you've asked, uh, I've used are basically nail varnish, <laughs> spray paint, wow. and colouring. But you're not just throwing the nail varnish and the spray paint. <laughs> it, it, it looks so delicate what you're doing and how you make it. It's really, it, it's, it's, a, it's a craft. <laughs> and I think it's painstaking how you do. I, I have actually seen you teach people. Yeah. And children as well, real community, um, educating the community. You're saying you're actually getting to the people. And it is community workshops that you've been doing. And those children, those kids, as soon as they get this massive, big bucket of water and they're using nail varnish or they're using, there was something else that they used that day, dye, just food colouring dye. Food colouring dye, yes, we kept it safe. This for them. Okay, this popped in the popped the paper on top and it came out and they were they were in awe of what they had made. They're not even made a fan by that point. They were just in awe of the paper. Like, so yeah, so you much are. research and do you know what? So many people um, were basically saying what's put them off marbling is the fact that it's quite expensive um, and you need quite a lot of space in your home to do it. So I thought if I can research unconventional methods of marbling but it's also really cost effective mm. things that we have at home or mm. quite you know cheap you know very accessible to buy like food dye a shaving foam mm. we could all get hold of water hopefully mm. um so for me a lot of people thought oh i didn't know that these methods can produce a marbled effect which was for me mission accomplished really with and things that really will be that. because you know when we think of marbling we do think of the corrigan water we think of um, acrylic paint but what i've done here is i've just said that is great that's the traditional methods but we can all be paper Marblers. marbling artists yeah. if we try mm -hmm. other methods and i've i've really enjoyed it and it's really um you know with the risk assessments it's been really great <laughs> really easy <laughs> To be honest with you, colouring all of it is is really safe. So you can continue the craft at home. Yeah. And that's yeah. very important to me to teach the skill in a way where other people feel comfortable mm. and confident to say, mm. I can continue this. Many Fabulous. many artists their, their workshops sort of end in their studio and you go away thinking well, I can't do that at home. I can't afford this. I don't have the space. I can't do that. But with Sandra Globatory, my sessions are through the 365 awesome. are designed deliberately so people go away um, feeling like I can continue on without you, Terry, yeah. in a way. <laughs> Thank you, but I can actually do my own and thing. Children and young adults can then take it home and show their parents because it's things that can be found in your bathroom or in your kitchen. So you're making that wonderfully accessible. And then I know that the way that you train the step by step guides that you are given, that they can go home and make fans. They can buy the, the, the bits that are needed. Um, what I'm going to do, Victoria, is I'm going to just run away for a moment and grab something that I actually purchased from you a couple of years ago because I'm so proud of it. I, I don't use it as a fan. I actually use it in my living room because it looks beautiful on the shelf. <clears throat> I, I, when, when, the, when the weather gets warm, I might use it as a fan. Alternatively, I might come to Made in Greenwich and buy some fans yeah. from you because... All your products are available. Well, I say all your products. They're unique, so individually done. And you've got men's ties as well. Did you see Absolutely. That? I've got men's ties, so including men in there. And I really want to extend, extend that range um, to men's clothes and other things like that. And just to say that the hand fans are really art pieces. They're pieces of art, just like a painting is. Yes. So you can just get a fan stand like oh, this. Oh, wow. And that's the idea. You can place it in your bedroom, in your living room, just to uplift you, especially in my workshops that the people have designed it themselves. 
yeah. you know, they can really write a special message or an uplifting saying. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I really love the fact that you've got it on display. Yeah. <laughs> if you show people your um, your artwork in the, in the show. So just to take you through the exhibition, this side is basically pre-marbled papers and I've done swatches for each um, fan, each paper, so that people that come can actually get a closer look of the marbled paper before it's been pleated. So um, before it's made into the folds. Um, also, I've marbled my frames. <laughs> I can see your fan. <laughs> I've marbled my frames, just, to, just so you can see what marbling is like with wood. Um, and again, nobody's really done that, marbling the frames of the fans. We've marbled the leaf, the arc shape. And just to say, this exhibition is called Marbled Arch, just like the, um, oh, uh, the station, the London station, Marbled oh, Arch, yeah. Marbling the Arch. And then on this side, also, so I'll just walk you through. Um, this is the spray paint on water. Wow. And then we've got acetone and nail varnish. Really fun to do. Yeah. Watch it. And then that continues on. Then we've got the food colouring section. Mm -hmm. Lovely shop, lovely space. But you guys are moving. We will we'll be moving, yes. So <clears throat> in the January, February of next year, we're going to be on Royal Hill. Um, we're moving from Creek Road to Royal Hill, so make sure you go and uh, make your Christmas shopping by local. We have, uh, I think it's 120 local makers, Victoria being one of them. Um, when I say local, I mean Greenwich makers. That's why it's called Made in Greenwich. Um, there's really something for everybody. I like to think it's a shop of curiosities, and um, it's always changing. <clears throat> there's something new all the time uh, I think it's oh that's beautiful Victoria that that 70s neon one is absolutely glorious <laughs> um, really striking <clears throat> so um, what what's what's the future plans hopefully more press interviews hopefully more uh, appearances <laughs> in newspapers <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me what We Can Do is? I've heard that you're going to be on a platform called We Can Do. Yes, We Can Do are helping artisans to basically sell their craft courses. They are an incredible platform because it's um, based in France originally, and now they've come over to the UK and they are in search of unique workshops and rare workshops also, special workshops that you can't really get anywhere else. And again, I got an email and they heard about what I do. They heard about the Heritage Craft Association of Great Britain, that it's an endangered craft. And they just invited me and said, listen, we want you on board. And I said, yes. <laughs> And again, Made in Greenwich, thank you so much. This is the actual venue where the workshops will take place. Oh, fantastic. Um, my fan workshops are different. You cannot get what I offer anywhere in the world um, because it incorporates things like fan dancing. I teach techniques with that, um, all done by me. Um, we look at also mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. uh, a bit of mm -hmm. music on there and looking at the performance and the performative side mm. that fans can generate. Because I studied musical theatre and it's just incredible. So many things that I've learned that I give away and you leave with um, handouts to continue on yeah. with your research and with your learning of the craft. Bridgerton, I loved Bridgerton. That was absolutely fabulous. And I think there was quite a lot of fan flirting in Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, in fan flirting, <laughs> I, would know, I wouldn't know where to start, but I think there are signals that you can give 
Yes. To say other ladies in in the, the the dance room to say, oh, look over there, or don't go there because that person's mine. Or I'm sure there's lots of different ways. How fabulous to do a course in fan flirting. <laughs> yes, we do touch upon that. Um, the language of the fan. The language. Of the, yeah, we do touch upon upon that, and um, we look at the history of why why it came about, and um, yeah, that's also in the in the mix of it all. But it's just yeah. a wonderful. I can't wait. You can book okay. it for friend or yourself. Um, you can book it as a gift voucher, an early Christmas present, mm -hmm. a birthday present, and anniversary book, present. They um, book this on We Can Do. Yes, you can book it on the We Can Do website. Yes, and yeah, you just get to meet me in person. I love it because it's in person. Yes. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing the types of people that are interested in that come along. And a lot better venue than made, uh, made in Greenwich to have that. The photo mm -hmm. shoot was just awesome for... Oh uh, yes, and you, they've done a video as well. If you go to um, Victoria's Fan the Glory with Tori um, Instagram, there is a YouTube video that you can copy and paste from the post that she's done. You can see a video that's been made. Um, <clears throat> we say, need to just a quick oh, yeah. add. Also, they are going to start corporate uh, classes that you can book. So you and your team at work, your colleagues, if yeah. you're looking for an extra, you know, team building experience or something fun to do, you can book it as a team, corporate team. They're adding in that feature. So I'm really super thrilled that I've joined them. Just to ask, just to add that in. <laughs> Team building, fan making, and all the, the the bits and bobs that come with the fan making, the history, the marbling, and um, yeah, getting the team oh, to as well. We could design your business logo. Very, so very clever. It's it's getting me as an artist to really open up. The more I'm collaborating, Gary, mm. I'm just really growing and deepening. Seeing you know what else can be done that hasn't yet been done. Amazing. And that's what I'm finding really, really intriguing at the moment. Interesting, yeah. Wonderful. I had a couple of thoughts before I came on um, today. I'll play a little game, and hopefully we'll eke out a couple of little bits and pieces from you as well. So this or that, yeah. So I'm going to ask you, do you, with what mediums you like playing with, I think the word is mediums, and uh, we'll start nice and easy. Do you prefer... Crayon or paint? I prefer paint. Paint. Acrylic? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. So we're going with paint. Paint or felt it pen? Paint. Paint. Paint or nail varnish? Nail varnish. Wow. <laughs> Why? Why is that? You're so, yeah. I just think the way I experimented with it for the exhibition, Marvel Dutch exhibition, I it's, there's just so much that can be done and it looks so beautiful mm -hmm. and striking on a fan mm -hmm. and the colours and it's just cost effective. You can buy so much, experiment so much. True, um, true, very true. Yeah. So we've got the nail varnish. Nail varnish or fabric? Do you use fabric on your fans? I do and I'm starting more to learn you know even further about it I mm -hmm. would go for fabric fabric I have seen you dancing which is a beautiful experience you have to watch a fan uh, fan dancing and the fabric that extends from the fans and the swishing and to watch your trainees or the, the people that are, yeah. are are coming to learn about fans to watch their faces when they see the joy of you dance with swishing of the material I think is just astonishing so you think fabric mm -hmm. fabric or feathers both. Oh, <laughs> that was a burpee. I'm not sure you're allowed both. <laughs> no, you need both. You need both. But feathers, feathers have a tradition, don't they? Yes, uh, feathers really well. You can use ostrich feathers, hen, peacock feathers, 
they want a lot of fixed fans and it's just whoa it's really striking to see beautifully i can imagine I they used to but, fan but, the pharaohs in those days and you see these feathers oh, and, and of course queen elizabeth the first many you know aristocracy monarchs they had fixed fans that have real big feathers and plumes on them <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna say so you've not got fabric feathers fabric feathers or eco glitter oh i do love glitter Mess. sometimes on the leaves of the fans it doesn't um, always stay there yeah it can get anywhere so i'll probably still say fabric and feather over the glitter mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah i do you think that yeah glitter looks beautiful I, I make pouches for the fans that i do so cases basically so glitter is something that i might personally add onto the case the pouch of the fabulous. fan rather than on the arch leaf <laughs> fabulous so that that was that, that well done so we've got fabric and uh fabric and feathers and glitter it's it's very much you victoria yes. you are a fab fabulous woman and if anybody has the chance to have you on their show or in their newspaper or any part of their documentaries i think they will absolutely adore your company and your knowledge and the experience that you have already gleaned in in a very short period of time thank you just but also another highlight when you asked me earlier obviously alan titchmarsh the black history 365 but also being on the Small Business Britain. Oh my gosh, absolutely. That's. Um, you, 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 yeah, the small, <laughs> small Biz 100, Small Business Britain, celebrates on the 2nd of second December. December. Um, it truly highlights that shopping local, shopping small business, boosts the economy. And if we think about what Made in Greenwich is doing, at the moment with 120 i think mm -hmm. uh makers that economic drive for those makers is phenomenal if you keep money local um it it comes back twofold the the investment within the local economy and mm -hmm. you have been a bit of a star with them actually over the past couple of weeks tell us a little bit about it oh wow somebody said oh you should really um be part of Small Business Britain. So I researched them, went onto their new website, signed up to the newsletter, and I was receiving quite a large volume of emails mm -hmm. and webinars that they do for free. And yep. um, covering such a broad spectrum of topics like finance, how to use social media, how to grow your profit sales for Christmas. And so I went to quite a few of the um, webinars I applied, attended, and then it came up, apply for the Small Biz 100 to appear. I thought I should because I'm a small business. It's tailored for somebody like me. So there's nothing to lose here. And so when I actually, you know, got it and saw that I was on the 100, I just thought, again, another, another icing and celebration for 2023. And there was this mm. blue tie dinner where we can, all the winners can come, past alumni, we can all network. And again, it's like I've, I have now another family of, um, yeah, artisans, business, all types of businesses, really. And it was just so nice to just, again, be recognised on another platform because bigger organisations, they, a lot of the time, you know, they're just seen, they're talked about, they're heard, they're celebrated. <laughs> but what Small Business Britain is doing very well is giving a chance for small businesses to yeah be celebrated and admired. Yeah, absolutely. and I'm, I, I'm loving it i'm networking i'm more collaborations will come for 2024 we 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 applied as the shop a couple of years ago um we 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 didn't get through for uh, unfortunately but i think <clears throat> it's quite a complicated concept having over a 120 makers who would we choose to highlight all of them we obviously um so for you as a greenwich resident if you as an independent business and small handmade 
producer of a dying craft it's been a fabulous platform for you to be on and i love the fact you say is a family because you really are part of the made in greenwich gcda family and i think you finding us has has helped in lots of ways for you to boost you don't need confidence but just just to have that that little family behind you just pushing and and supporting and 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 helping you along the way is so important for an individual. Well, I say, um, Gary, I say wherever I go, I take a bit of Greenwich with me. So it's just interesting because in the conversations that I have, I am mentioning um, the fact that I am local to Greenwich, I'm local to the borough. Um, and so I just feel like all that I've done with the GCDA, with other organisations, I'm taking that with me. And Amazing. Wherever I go, Greenwich, London is always going with me. Um, and the story of how I got there, um, my family talking about friends who have helped and encouraged me. Anywhere, anywhere I go, I will never forget Greenwich, never forget the GCDA. Um, and it was just mm. wonderful. Everything's coming together now for me, I think, Gary. You know, oh, you're going to go so I get to talk about the 365. I get to talk about the fact that my products now you can buy them live in the made in greenwich shop mm. the earrings the men's ties you mentioned the fans mm -hmm. that's a huge step up for me because i don't yet have a premises yeah and so i want to well, you... thank you i want to thank made in greenwich the gcda for giving local artisans that platform to have an exhibition to sell their work mm. to even just talk to the general public um that i think gave me the real confidence to even apply for something like the Small Biz 100. Mm. Wonderful. I know the whole of GCDA thanks you as well, because you are, as I kept saying, a pleasure to be with. Uh, Victoria, I am one of your biggest fans, <laughs> and I always will be. <laughs> and, you, know, you can call on me if you need any advice and help, and also come on our, all of our courses that we do for free. Hmm? There'll be new things happening in 2024. More collaborations with the GCDA, Made in Greenwich, are already in the works. <laughs> very exciting. Very, very exciting. So this is not the last of me, ne okay? Yeah. <laughs> never will be. Never will be. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you, Victoria. And okay. lock up Made in Greenwich safe and sound. And it will be pleased to have you in the morning. Yay. Thank you so much, Gary. A pleasure Thanks. for interviewing me. Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Take care. Lovely to see you. Bye. 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 Bye.